kicking the tires. This week we got Justin Schuler, Seth Eggert, Zach Catanzaretti, Ryan Vargas, NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, joins us as a special guest. And uh, glad to have you on the show. We'll hear from you uh, in just a little bit. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy week. Uh, we're live again. I don't know whose idea this was to go to go live a second time after last week. But thank you all for joining us. If you would like to chime in, any of our social media stuff that's uh, out there, you can you can reply. Uh, and Justin is monitoring that. We'll answer your questions on the air, uh, so you can you can you know interact with us. We would like that a lot. So uh, it makes us feel like we're important and that you actually care. So uh, definitely do that. And if you're watching on YouTube Live, um, go to the subscribe button. We need you guys to do that as well. Zach, you look like you're in your car and you have a 1978 model. Uh, you know, lawn chair behind you. What's going on here? Yeah, funny. This was back when uh, NASCAR uh, just came back from the pandemic, uh, and I was covering races from my car. I went to Charlotte, Bristol, all those tracks, and this is the seat that I had. Um, I had to just pull it out outside my car and sit and cover the races in the most boring fashion ever. But yeah, I'm uh, on my way home right now. I just uh, got fitted for a film that we're doing over the next uh, few months, and. Uh, Definitely didn't want to miss this one. It's a it's a cool show. A lot of uh, a lot of topics um, on the ground right now, and uh, yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy silly season to say the least. Um, really, there's really six guys who who were looking at for this, and the uh, first one was Ty Dillon. Um, you know, his his career has kind of been. Uh, I mean, we've kind of just been waiting for a little bit. He was one of those full-time cup guys who have been waiting on for the last uh, few months on what he's going to do. Jermaine Racing um, obviously is out of the sport now, out of the cup series. And, uh, you know, we've saw, seen him go to Gaunt Brothers for the season. But now uh, he's given another opportunity for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing in the uh, the 54 Xfinity car. Uh, big opportunity for him. I mean, he's he's been given a, a few competitive rides in the past. I mean, as a driver, um, he definitely brings experience to that team. Um, I mean, he hasn't had the, the success that I feel like we, we, he, we could have seen from him uh, with uh, Richard Childress racing in the past. But, I mean, you can say the same with, with Hamlick. I mean, he hasn't won. Um, Ty only has that one career Xfinity win. But uh, that experience that he brings and, and that knowledge, I think they're going to they're gonna get a driver who's not – I mean, he's not going to cause any major issues off the track. And I, I think he's going to bring cars home in one piece. And that's just what they're looking for right now. Um, just having so many young guys, they're going to get someone who's still young, but he's going to bring that um, that experience as well. So that that's going to work out well for him, I think. That starts at Daytona, and then uh, Alex LeBay, uh, another guy with uh, on the Xfinity side of things. Um, he's returning with DGM Racing, uh, coming off really his best career season yet. Uh, he was full time a couple years ago. He was part time, and then he was back full time last year. And, um, I think he had one top five, five top tens, nearly made the playoffs. I mean, he was he was really strong. Um, I mean, he was right there pretty much every week with Josh Williams and guys like that. Mid-pack, Jeremy Clements, Brandon Brown. I mean, they were all just getting better and better all year, and he was right there. Uh, we don't know if he's going to be full-time this year or not. The last I checked, at least, um, he's kind of eyeing half the season right now, hoping for more. Uh, but, yeah, coming off his best year, I think it would be really huge for him and that team. Um, if they can get full time and uh, staying on the Xfinity side of things, most of this news is really Xfinity. Uh, Ty Gibbs uh, right there with Ty Dillon. He's going to be with Joe Gibbs for at least one race this year, the Daytona uh, Daytona road course, which is, uh, I mean, that's going to be a crazy race just like it was last year. And um, it's interesting with Ty, I didn't really expect an Xfinity debut this early. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot. I mean, he hasn't even been full-time ARCA yet and he hasn't seen a truck. Uh, now he's going to be an Xfinity car. I mean, I know Ryan Vargas, he knows about that. He went from K&N one year uh, to making his Xfinity debut, you know, not too long after that, the following year. Uh, so it's it's not crazy out there. We've seen it more and more lately. But uh, with, with Ty, I mean, he's, he's shown a lot of potential, of course. Um, he's going to be ARCA this year. Uh, but, but for him to be in a, an Xfinity car, I mean, that's crazy competition. And we, we're just going to see what he can do just – Keep keep it on keep it out of the green stuff as they say on road courses and, and try to get as much uh, track time as possible. So that's really all I expect from him. Uh, then Jordan Anderson, um, he's going to be full time Xfinity this year. We've seen him in the trucks for years and years now with his uh, with his own team for the last few years and nearly won Daytona in the truck series last year. But now he's making that step up. 
Uh, he has some experience, uh, Xfinity experience behind him, but it's been a few years, and usually that was like uh, just he barely got any real track time when it comes to getting a lot of laps in. So that's a huge deal for the team, a uh, huge deal for him, big for the sport too, to have a, um, a cell phone driver like that um, make that next step up. That's going to be uh, huge for him. And um, Timothy Peters as well, kind of more on the truck series side. Uh, he was away for, I guess, four or five years from uh, full-time racing, and now he's going to be back with Rackley WAR Racing, a uh, brand-new truck series team. And uh, cool for him. I mean, that's a good driver for them to get, someone who has an, a crazy amount of experience. He was full-time for a number of years, nearly won the championship, I think, in uh, 2012. So he's going to bring a lot of wealth um, of knowledge to that team. And uh, really, when he left the sport in 2016 full-time, that was pretty much his one of his best seasons. Uh, he didn't win that year, but he was really consistent. Um, finished top five in points most most of his seasons, and um, I think if he can, if he still has that, you know, it's been a few years. It's tough to tell, but if he still has that, I think uh, that team can can really bring some solid numbers this year. Um, and then, of course, um, Ryan Vargas, who's with us uh, here tonight. Um, he's going to be full time with JD Motorsports this year. Um, I don't have to tell him, but, you know, he's made, a, I think he did like nine or so starts last year, got his first top 10. Um, you know, that, 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 that whole team, I mean, they have a lot going for them this year. They have, I believe, four full-time guys with uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Colby Howard, and uh, Landon Castle uh, with Ryan. So there's going to be a lot, um, a lot of track time for them, a lot of experience and, and some rookies. It's a kind of a nice variation of drivers I think they have this year. And, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, with Ryan, it, it's cool going from the k and series back in 2018 with the uh, Rev Racing and, uh, you know, just jump right into Xfinity. And I feel like, um, Ryan, that you've done a good job of kind of acclimating yourself. And um, it's cool to see another Rev Racing guy who started with that team um, for a while. I mean, they were only in the, the ARCA East series, but now, you know, we saw Nick Sanchez. He's going to be full time in ARCA this year. And, and Varg is kind of coming from that from that background. It's, uh, it's cool for the combine, it's cool for drive diversity, and um, it's cool for the series and the team overall. So um, congrats on that, Ryan. And uh, yeah, just a lot of news overall. It's uh, going to be a crazy year for sure. Well, Zach, I know you've got to get back on the road. I, I want to make it a little bit better. You're not going to – you might have to bring the chair with you, but uh, news today uh, about photography at the tracks and things like that is going to be uh, very beneficial for kicking the tires, and you're going to be an integral part of that. So uh, uh, we may be sharing – you and I may be sharing some of those duties, but uh, – uh, also, I think Rachel's going to be doing some of that out in California for the West Coast stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations. We uh, It's the hard work of kicking the tires that uh, got us recognized to be able to, to do some of that extra stuff. And uh, especially with the way the pandemic has uh, changed the sport. You need to get on the road, but why don't you go ahead and tell Intro Ryan from your perspective. You, you gave us a little teaser, but uh, he's going to be doing some stuff for JD Motorsports this year, obviously, as you talked about. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, full time uh, with that team. As I said, he's gonna have a lot of a lot of teammates, and uh, yeah, he's he's slowly building that that resume of, of racing behind him. Um, you know, he's got about a dozen or so starts. So, I mean, a full time season is gonna bring a lot of uh, a lot of new challenges when it comes to super speedway racing and all that. But um, it starts in just a couple weeks, and uh, yeah, Ryan, of course, is here with us tonight. Yeah, no, thank you guys for uh, for having me. It's uh, it's a really cool opportunity uh, to be full time for the first time in three years. Um, haven't had really a set ride uh, for quite some time. Uh, it's been, you know, it hasn't been easy by any means. Uh, we're actually currently at my desk where my calendar is filled with uh, different phone calls and tasks and meetings and all this other stuff. I had like three or four today. Um, you know, that's just some of the things that I have to do. Um, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, I'm glad uh, to be a part of JD Motorsports. Um, it, it's really cool to have such a cool, such a unique group there. Um, it's like a family. I mean, Johnny Davis is very big on that. Is that you know when you work there, or you work with us there. Um, you're a part of a. You're part of the family, um, and that's something that's really kind of happened. You know, since I first started going there. Um, you know, I, I say this all the time, but, you know, when I walked into JD Motorsports for the first time, I was a washed up K&N driver who didn't really have much going for him. Uh, and here we are today. So um, just 
you know, chipping away at it, trying to, you know, make my name more and more in this sport. Uh, and it's been going pretty well so far. I wouldn't say you were washed up. Man. Yeah, I mean, no come on. That was, uh, I, I, I've been following your career since you were at Rev Racing. I think that's, uh, Zach's bailing out for, uh, by the way, for anybody that is, is, uh, he's on the road, as he said, he's heading, he's heading home. So he's going to be safe and do that. But, uh, yeah, I, I, that's where I met you at was when you're at Rev Racing. And, you know, I mean, I've, I think you've done great. Uh, I want you to tell us, you know, everything that you've got going on. Your, you know, if you could allude to some of your sponsors and stuff, I know what you had last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you did have a, a couple of big announcements and things, but you know I'm I'm ready to do this. But I know you don't like you can't say that because you don't have it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're still we're still working on a lot of things, and obviously there's still plenty of opportunity available for sponsors to hop on board. Uh, you know, now having a full time slot just kind of ready to go, uh, we have the opportunity to kind of fill that stuff up, which is. Um, really really cool uh, like i said it's incredible to see just everyone kind of you know jump behind this uh, and believe in me uh johnny davis brian barry gary keller all those guys there um for believing in me which is really uh really cool um it's been it hasn't like i said it has not been easy by any means uh but it's you know like i said we're, we're still working on a lot of things still working on finalizing a lot of plans um i'm just really really excited to get and hit the track well i think too a lot of people don't realize how unique you are because you actually do have a really good grasp on the industry side of of a race car and a race team i mean i don't know how many people could say that they got a full-on social media uh platform to sponsor their car that was that was probably one of the coolest stories ever um and a lot of that was your your doing obviously so um, I think that's also a good uh, grasp that you've got. Um, but tell us a little bit about uh, uh, that because I know you know a lot of people followed that. A lot of people started to follow NASCAR because of that whole uh, publicity of getting TikTok on board. Um, you know, so what what did you learn from from that experience, and then applying that to now this this full time opportunity with JD? Yeah, I, uh, I I learned a lot. You know, when it came down to that TikTok deal, it, like I. Uh, you know, the whole story really is, you know, a buddy of mine, Ryan Pistana, who's a very talented graphic designer. He does paint schemes for Tommy Joe Martins, Haley Deegan, and several other drivers. Um, just out of the blue, he he knew I was a big TikTok user. I had talked with him several times in the past about how much I love the app. Uh, and that's before the sponsorship. Like, I legitimately find myself getting lost in it. Like, I sit on there for – I could sit on there for hours. Yes, um, I know. Yeah, I do that. I, say, I do knows. that. My, so. my yeah. wife texts me so many videos. Yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Chris, so, Chris Knight and I send videos back and forth to one another. So, oh, you know. that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> but um, so like he ended up just tweeting out a rendering of what a TikTok car would look like. And, um, you know, it got a, got a few hundred likes, couple, a good handful of retweets. Uh, but it ended up kind of getting making its way to – some of the folks at TikTok, someone saw that. Um, and it, they kind of looked at it and said, you know, why not? Um, and it was really cool. Like they jumped into this. Uh, they didn't jump into it, you know, not knowing what they were getting into. They did a lot of research on myself, my team, the sport. Um, they wanted to jump on board with me. You know, I was using the platform to grow. Uh, and that's something that's kind of like a big, big reason as to why they supported me. Um, it's by far my biggest platform. I, I'm at like 173,000 uh, followers on there right now. Um, wow. And I continuously use that to grow and get new fans, not just of myself, but of the sport. Uh, and TikTok saw that. They, they saw that I was using the app to grow my overall brand. Um, they saw that, you know, my who I am. They know I'm not a big name driver. I don't have a last name. I don't have a lot of backing behind me. Um, so when they saw that, they they really just wanted to support it. And, uh, you know, a few conversations led to another, and we ended up running the last six races of the season with TikTok on the car, which mm-hmm. is still crazy to say. Um, for me, looking at it, it's still just like this This is so unreal. But um, it was such a unique opportunity. Uh, it was an absolute blessing. They really believed in me uh, and supported us. And it, it opened up the opportunity for us to go out there and show what we really could do. Um, you know, we had a few issues here and there, but every time we showed up to the track, you know, last year we had the no qualifying, 
we unloaded fast. We were always, you know, top 15, even at sometimes top 10 on speed. Um, it showed at Texas. It showed at Talladega. We had speed at the Roval. We had speed at Martinsville um, and Phoenix. Uh, you know, if we didn't have some bad luck, we probably would have had a lot, lot more better finishes. But uh, just them supporting it really opened the floodgates into what we could do as an organization. And I think that was what was really cool. Hey, did you get a die cast of the tick cart car? No, uh, oh, not oh, yet. Oh, We're, oh, are uh, they going to, are they going to be? Are they... <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Elijah Burke, he made one for Christmas though. And he gave it to me. So that was cool. There you go. I get some know. of those made. That'd be cool, man. Uh, uh, oh, I know. Well, I they, know. They, they, they look awesome. I know I've seen a few customs uh, on eBay of both that and your Darlington throwback from last year. Mm. So a cool one. Yeah. I'm happy to be an investor if you decide to make a TikTok car <laughs> and, and need you know the front money to actually get the die cast. I'm happy to help with that and if we get a cut of it. Man, I want to do it real bad. We're we're working on it. We're working on it. We're 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 thinking of some things to do. So um but yeah, I mean and I and I know a lot of people in the sport they like supporting the, they like supporting those who kind of like support, you know, I guess you could say the underdogs. Like, you know, a lot of people like to support Tommy Joe's sponsors. A lot of people like to sponsor, jo like work with Josh Williams, Jeremy Clements. I, I know it sounds funny to say this. TikTok's that. Um, they believed in me. They believed in our organization. Um, they jumped into this because they wanted to grow me, the team, and they wanted to show fans that they cared. And uh, I think that's something that kind of needs to go kind of addressed. It's it's really cool. I'm not – I don't have people telling me to say this. Um, this is legit just how it was. They believed in me. They believed in our organization. It's opened up opportunities for me to drive race cars. And uh, I, I think that's something that needs to be kind of known. Yeah, and that, I'd like to, that's a I'd pretty like to rare partnership something. like that. That's rare. So I'd like to point something out. You've got other sponsors. You got sponsors with JD this year. What what's your what's your livery look like with JD Motorsports? Red. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it, it's very rare to see a JD car that's not red. So your TikTok car <laughs> definitely stood out in that sense last year. But uh, can you say what anything else that you're working on? Or is there? I mean, I mean everything is still just you know in the t talking stages right now. Un unfortunately. Um, you know, I wish there was more opportunities that were coming about. Um, and you know, like I said, I had three meetings today. I'm literally looking at my calendar and there's one, two, three, four, five minus your guys is my, minus this on my schedule today. Um, <laughs> so, we so I mean, start naming just... off companies that have, that are like red, you know, schemes like Lego <laughs> yeah. or Ace Hardware, yeah, exactly. Target. Yeah. Ace Hardware, uh, Red Robin, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah and speaking of uh sponsors and partners you did have one that did sponsor an iRacing event last night uh NutriShop uh talk a little bit about that and how that went uh I was live tweeting it I attempted to qualify uh the kicking tires car was in the transfer spot when uh someone behind me decides to <laughs> send me into a four-wheel drift in their one and mm. two <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, NutriShop, they've been uh, they've been a real cool supporter of mine, uh, specifically NutriShop Monterey Park. Um, they, It's a really cool group. They offer a lot of good health consultations and just they really care about, you know, improving you. Uh, they, they offer the best supplements you can get. Uh, they hooked me up with plenty of it. I actually have some of it in my room on the corner. You can't see it. It's on the floor. But uh, my, I have stuff just on the floor. This photo was on the floor like two days ago, so I'm still hanging things up. But um, no, they've supported me in a big way uh, on the personal side. Um, and them jumping on board for the eSports stuff, they've been really wanting to dip their toes in that water, um, into the waters of eSports. Uh, and I figured, you know, with the timing, the timing of them bringing that up, I said, well, I'm working on putting together a deal of my own. Let's have fun with it. Let's let's run this race. And uh, you mentioned the Street Stock Showdown. That was a heck of a show. Uh, there was two, three, four wide racing the mm -hmm. entire throughout the entire field. I think the the the, the front pack consisted of everyone from first to thirty fourth yep. uh, in the front pack, and that's Street Stocks. So you can yep. imagine how nuts that looked. 
I, I think I, there was only one lap in which the leader was actually clear of the entire field. And I want to say that was Casey Kerwin somewhere around lap 20, 25, something like that. And, but all 80 laps, it was nonstop action side by side. Uh, I think at one point they were four wide for the lead on the backstretch. Yep. And somehow okay. that worked. Somehow yeah. that worked. <laughs> it was. I mean, I, I I highly recommend going and check. If if someone's watching this, go check out the replay on Podium Esports. It's, I mean, <laughs> it sounds goofy. Um, it sounds dumb, but it was probably one of the best races I had witnessed on the service, which is kind of funny to say. But that was the whole point of the event too. It was yeah. meant to just be. It was meant to kind of blend the line between serious and fun. Um, cause you know, you get the, you know, the Coke series and the road to pro and all that stuff. That's serious. You know, there's no messing around there, but then you get like the funny stuff. Like you, I, I'll shout out my buddy, Travis here, the moon car yeah. and stuff like that. You get the goofy stuff. Well, I kind of want to like be in between. I wanted it to be like, I want the, the, the good guys to prosper, but I also want like, you know, the moon car type racing to also still be like there. And, uh, I, I think that was something that was pretty evident in the show. You had some of the most insane moves you could see a lot of people hey, have underestimate you, have, have those you ever street seen stocks. me yeah have you ever seen me do eye racing <laughs> i've seen you do eye racing <laughs> <laughs> wait on that the track or like open that's the all you're gonna say um <laughs> well well you I'm have kidding, to remember ryan you have to remember ryan was in uh some of the monday night races yeah. uh with i was too until season. they kicked yep. me out and, <laughs> and um he was also, if I remember correctly, you were also in Lower Half Dash, which we sponsored as well. Yes, uh, we're I did doing some of the Lower Half Dash, and I was part of season one of Monday Night Racing. Yes. Yeah, we're doing. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, another Lower Half Dash. Uh, I've been working with some yeah. of the guys on that. Um, we pro we're not going to be doing anything with Monday Night Racing, uh, <laughs> but we are doing for the fans racing uh, with Justin Malelo and that group. We've got like. 18 races that we're sponsoring uh and nice. we're probably going to do a couple of one-offs uh later on as uh you know as soon as uh robin hood decides to let me make some money uh there you go <laughs> oh, yep. you knew i was going to get that in there and <laughs> oh, yeah. uh you know and so we'll, we'll we'll we may put up some cash for uh for a race for something and uh we would definitely want you to be in it um, oh yeah. So, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm all about iRacing. racing. I love it. I'm in my sim right now. This my you, know, you can't see it, but it's uh this is my whole sim setup with a chair and yep. steering wheel and. But now, yeah, I, I suck. I need I need I need a driver <laughs> coach, Ryan. That's what I need. I need a driver coach. Listen, I'll get on Discord with you and yell at you if you want. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I, I, that's what Kyle I Bush accept, did to I me. Accept payment, I accept payment, uh, PayPal, Venmo, and McDonald's. So you choose. And I can just get. On, I can get on the. I can get on the track with 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 well, Kyle Bush, and he does the same thing. Well, I, and I wasn't anywhere well, near him, but I got the blame. Oh, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. He just said that he accepts payment via McDonald's. Just door dash it to him and support two NASCAR sponsors at the same time. There you exactly. go. Like that's when, right. Uh, yeah. Wallace and Matt Kenseth crashed. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, uh, uh, Seth, I think we got a little bit more iRacing news, yeah? Yes, we do. Uh, speaking of the Coke series, I think oh, I saw... Hold on a second, Seth. Seth I'm going to interrupt you. Remember, we are, we are live. So, Ryan, I know you've had a busy day and a busy schedule, but if you'd like to hang around and chime in on any of the topics we're going to talk about, feel free. We're, we're just hanging out and doing... Oh, yeah. And, uh, so, you're welcome to stick around. And same with all Sounds of you good. watching I'll live. Feel free to comment. We'll get yep. your questions in if you want to ask Ryan or any of us uh, questions as well. And uh, which I was about to get to, Ryan, I think I saw you in a photo of a Coke series reveal earlier today, yep. uh, Space Station Gaming. Yes, uh, um, I'm excited to kind of work uh, with Space Station Gaming, uh, Space Station Racing, uh, to be exact, work, uh, get, getting the opportunity to work alongside uh, Malik and Vicente, uh, both really talented drivers, got to do a lot of content with them. Uh, I'm going to be streaming here soon, uh, so that's going to be fun. Um, I got to get a camera first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'm really excited. Um, it's just something for me to dip my toes into yeah. as well. Um, you know, I I do these he, these hosted races. I do these big events. I, I try to keep the big events to a minimum. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to oversaturate the market with e-truck night or street stocks or any of that stuff. Um, I want them to be special. 
But if I have the opportunity to kind of hop on and do miscellaneous hosted races and stream it, um, or even broadcast races, host a session and watch people be stupid, I can do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, excited to work with Space Station a little bit this year. Sign me and, up for those figure eight races. <laughs> Let's go. And, and speaking of Space Station, uh, as Ryan was saying, uh, they now say that Malik Ray and Vicente Salas will be driving full time for them in the Coke Series this year. Uh, Malik, way back when, used to be one of my teammates uh, back in from 2011 to about 2013 or so. Good kid. Uh, he's still looking for his first win, and it's bound to happen at some point. Knowing him, it'll happen at Daytona. Uh, yeah. Junior Motorsports announced their drivers. Uh, both Michael Conley and Brad Davies are returning to their team. Uh, you also had the 24 Hours of Daytona this past weekend. Uh, Ryan, you were on the winning team with Colby Howard. Uh, Jeff mm-hmm. Green won. Uh, I believe Anthony Alfredo's team won. And then you had these two... I'm going to call them lovable uh, knuckleheads. Uh, Ian Plash and Keenan Cousin, they both ran the 24 hours solo for charity. Whoa. They raised over $5,500 for the cheer, uh, Children Miracle Network hospitals through Extra Life. Wow. And also That's running awesome. 24 hours solo, although in the C fixed trucks, Colin Fern of Brandon Built Motorsports. Hmm. He was raising money for St. Jude, and I believe he raised just over $1,000. Awesome. So, so you have some lovable knuckleheads, as I call them, who uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the money went to charity. And for Ian Plash, that was his seventh year in a row running the 24 Hours of Daytona solo. For Keenan, it was his third year in a row. Vargas, would you ever try anything like that? So I would never do anything like that, let alone be on camera doing that. <laughs> However, I've I've experienced being up. So like just recently, it's Thanksgiving. I uh, I was out in Mississippi with some family friends spending Thanksgiving out there. Yeah. And I drove back. <clears throat> so I drove there and back. So it was about a 10, 11 hour drive. Um And I couldn't sleep the night I was going to leave. So I stayed up. So I like, I was going to leave at three. I looked at my phone and it said, my my phone said two 15. And I said, well, I could just get up and go, or I could get 45 minutes of useless sleep. Um, So I got up and got on the road. I was up for, I think it was 37 hours in total by accident. Uh, That was tough. You hit a you hit a wall at hour like twenty three, where you're just like in the state, like you're kind of transcending a little bit. So, a few years ago, uh, I did the playoff pursuit. First, it was chasing the chase, and they changed it to playoff pursuit. But I I drove the entire ten race stretch of the playoffs for the cup cup series. So I started in Texas, drove to Chicago, went to uh, from Chicago to New Hampshire, New Hampshire to Dover. Dover to uh, Charlotte, Charlotte to Martinsville, Martinsville, no, I'm sorry, Charlotte to uh, uh, Talladega, Talladega to, to uh, Martinsville, then across to Texas, Phoenix, and back over to Homestar, Kansas, and then, yeah, you know, the whole thing. Here's the problem. That stretch from Phoenix to Homestead, you have to make it in three days. So after being up all day long covering the race for, for Phoenix – I had to get in the truck and pull a camper across the state of Texas, basically, so that I could be ahead of the game to be in, in Miami for media day, you know, Wednesday with NASCAR. So I had three days. I had to, I, I know what it's like to drive 24 hours straight and be up like that. It is. And I had a, I had a camper. I could have gone, I could have gone back in the, in the back and laid down, but if I would have, I'd have never made it to media day. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, you wouldn't catch me on camera doing that either. <laughs> luckily, uh, yeah. luckily I, the, the easy part was driving the driving at night um, through Arizona and Mexico. It's when I hit Texas that, I was like a brick wall. And by the way, the first city in Texas is called Anthony, Texas. And all I could think of was Anthony Stewart. And I was like, you know, <laughs> Tony has probably oh, raced out here somewhere near, near, near El Paso. But, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a brutal 
be, driving anything for 24 hours is just plain plain brutal. Now, the two of them, uh, Ian uh, Plash and Keen Coosen, they ran 850 and 837 laps each. Uh, between the two of them, Ian ran 850, uh, Keenan ran 837. The real-life record for a four-driver uh, team is 833. Really? Hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, they only had to get up to leave to go to the bathroom, I guess. Yes, and they took some 45-minute, 30-minute uh, breaks here and there to uh, eat, use the restroom. But they basically ran all 24 hours solo. Uh, Looks like Ryan bailed on us, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I can see his name, but I don't see. I don't. I don't know if he had to step away, but he may have had to take a phone call. So uh, we'll let him get away with that. Yeah. Uh, also on iRacing this week, uh, the FTF Racing League, their Grand National Series ran. Jake Poulin, who is uh, who works for iRacing, he is the production associate at iRacing. Won the Grand National Series race for FTF Racing. Uh, Anthony Alfredo won the Monday Night Racing League event at Homestead, knocking me out of the playoffs. And that's all I'll say about that because I'm still a little salty about the way the Monday Night Racing... Why couldn't you just do it like do it like everybody else does in that league and just wreck someone to get... I, I was about oh, to say, Seth, oh, I, Seth, I'm on a hot streak right now. <laughs> but, however, however, that hot streak... I've ran eight races of, I think, ten yeah. that have happened this year. I've been wrecked in six of them. Well, oh, here's the thing. When and I get... I, and when it's I get, my fault. Oh, I, I, I've had one wreck this... Sorry, two wrecks this season that have been my fault. Otherwise, the only clean race I had was Motegi in the IndyCar. No incidents. You see, I haven't crashed at and, all this year. Well, you haven't run this year. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I do. I do really good. I do really good in indie cars. I do really good at, at drafting tracks like Talladega and 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 Charlotte. I'm damn good at Charlotte and at, at Daytona. I suck on road courses and short tracks. Well, <laughs> uh, unfortunately for me, my luck like, was. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Rip me apart, Ryan. I, I just I just thought. Okay, Jerry, am I allowed to make fun of you a little bit? <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course, okay. of course. Don't listen to Jerry. Go make fun so, of him. So, so my my late model crew chief. Uh, I'll, I'll tell a little story and I'll relate it to what you just said. Um, so my late model crew chief. I was practicing one day and we were we were like tenth on the board of like twenty cars. I was like, man, the car's driving really good. And he said, yeah, it's, the cars drive good when you're going slow. <laughs> yep. I've heard that phrase before. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was the first thought in my mind. That's okay. That's okay. No. That's okay. Well, no, well, I love you, Jerry. You know, well, no problem. No problem. Well, well, I know here's... I suck. It's okay. I know I well, suck. I had, a, I had a similar situation like that where I'm like, wow, the car's handling so great. And same thing. Like, yeah, when when you're not driving over the edge. <laughs> well, here's but the thing. I... Uh, for Homestead uh, in oh, the man. practice race uh, for Monday Night Racing, I actually blew a tire because I was over driving the car that badly. I blew the right front tire going wow, into turn man. one. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell another story. I, I hate to butt in. So <laughs> my favorite thing is Texas. So the race where I got the top 10. So yeah. first stage, I was running like... I was off. I'm, I'm always off in the first stage. I'm just getting my bearings adjusted. I haven't driven these cars enough. We're like 21st or something like that. Like we were okay, but we weren't good. And my crew chief, who who is Brian Barry, he com comes on the radio and says, "How's the car?" And I'm like, "Honestly, car's good. A little free on entry. If we could tighten that up a little bit, I'm just driving it slow. I'm like, I, I need I need an adjustment on me." Not the car. So I, I told him, I said, the car's driving good because I'm not driving it right. So I, I know this feeling. <laughs> I'm familiar now, with it. <laughs> now, well, that's speaking also of, smart, so. Yeah. Now, speaking of Texas, that was your first time there, if I remember correctly. Yes. That was uh, actually my second ever mile and a half. Wow. How much uh, of iRacing are you going to rely on this year? Because although, yes, we're going to have more practice and qualifying this year than we did last year. It's only going to be at least eight weekends for Cup 
Which I think we only have like five or six for us. Yeah, I was going to say, it might be only five or six for Xfinity. Yeah, I mean, I used iRacing immensely uh, for everything last year. I actually, I, I said this to, so Jake Fisher, who is co-running the Space Station deal, I gave him all the credit in the world as to why I was good at Pocono, which is funny. Because he got me around Pocono on iRacing, and I went to Pocono in real life, and we were fast. Same thing with Texas. Uh, I, I learned a little bit from him there. So, I mean, it's just like I might have to rely on Jake Fisher to help me <laughs> on iRacing, and then it'll translate to the real car because um, it, it's just worked. It's worked really good. We were fast everywhere, uh, and it's no shortage to be thankful to iRacing for that. I can tell you something about Coda. Everybody wants to come – coming down that long front stretch, everybody wants to turn tight into one and then fade out. The cars that I've seen that do better take take a wider angle on turn one and then go around. It seems to be a lot faster. I've, I've watched a lot of races at Coda since it's open, and I was down there with uh, with Kaz Grala and Austin Dillon and those guys. So that's a that's a little tip. I kind of just as a, an observer watching. That's it's it's not the fastest route to to cut that corner like that. I did a I did a series during the off season ring ring around the roadies yeah. Mon and Mon and Ramen series and he, one of the I think the first race was at Coda and that was something I learned right off the bat it's it's tempting yeah, that's another thing is it, with i racing and even with real cars you know it's tempting to kind of search for different grooves that don't work or overdrive it but you got to find that happy medium now speaking of i racing you're not the first one to that said that you've actually learned something on iRacing and applied it to the real world. Anthony Alfredo said that about Dover after he won Saturday Night Thunder last year, and he had never been to the track, and he used what he learned on iRacing and applied it to Dover later in the year. Now, I know you've said you're already going to be relying on it. Uh, are you going to reach out to, whether it's Malik or Vicente, since you're working with Space Station Racing, are you going to rely on some of them in addition to Jake? or just try to wing it on iRacing? The, the way I go about doing uh, the prep for that is I'll – my thing is if I am if I feel like I can be good on the sim, I can be 80% there in real life. You know what I mean? You, it gets you close enough. Um, you know, I, I think I, – I've said it before. I, I said it earlier in this interview, but, I mean, just about everywhere we unloaded this year, we were pretty good. Uh, we had a lot of speed. Uh, I mean, I think JD Motorsports is up to their performance immensely this year. Um, but, you know, I definitely think iRacing is a big testament to me going into these tracks with more confidence than I should sometimes um, and knowing kind of a little bit about it before I even get there. Now, the last bit of iRacing news that dropped this week, the return of the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series – it's going to be 10 races, five on uh, FS1, five will be on NBC Sports later in the year. Uh, the first race will be Bristol Dirt, March 24th, followed by, I believe, Coda, Talladega, and Darlington. And the fifth race is uh, TBA. I don't know if they're going to uh, have Xfinity drivers like you, Ryan, in there this year or not, because last year they kind of tried to have everybody in – the main event, uh, the first two or three weeks. And then they split off the Xfinity truck, Arca, and everything into Saturday Night Thunder, which, considering the Coke series is Tuesday nights, I don't know it, uh, how they're going to go about doing it this year. But I did see you tweeted that you were going to see about trying to get in it, though. Yeah, I mean, if there's an opportunity to get in it, I definitely want to do it. Um uh, I will say this. I get more nervous for those races than my own races. Um, by far. I was terrible. Awful. Like, terrible. Like, I, I, I DNQ'd at Martinsville on iRacing. I, I mean, I was awful. Um, so and I, I. Spent mo I spent days practicing. Well, like, well, here's a question I have for you now. Because I actually DNQ'd for the... Uh, uh, for the fans racing leagues, uh, grand national race at Daytona. And that's the first time I ever DNQ'd. How did you, uh, take failing to qualify and try to learn from it? Granted it is I racing, but, uh, how did you 
I don't want to say get over it, but how did you take that experience and learn from it? So the funny thing is <laughs> I was okay with it because <laughs> I, I, I love short tracks in real life. I hate them on iRacing. Hate them. I can't save tires. I can't control yep. the car on exits. Um, I ran the core league. Uh, yeah. Not last night, Monday night. Yeah. And uh, I flat out lost it off of four. Uh, not even off of four. I got loose and then I saved it and then I got loose down the straightaway. Um, Cause there's things I consider myself okay at iRacing, racing. Um, but it, there's a lot that goes into it. That's so much different than the real car. Yep. Like a lot of people, they get yep. on iRacing racing first and then they get into the real car. They, you know, kind of are doing the both at the same time for me. I didn't get on iRacing racing until two years ago. So, well, yeah, about two, two, two and a half years. So I'm still a little behind on all that. And there's still so mm-hmm. many quirks and things I yep. need to learn uh, to where I just am flat out behind on people. Um, and the, the kind of the bummer part about that Martinsville deal was we were fast. I think I was like second or third in practice. Um, but then I just miffed qualifying. I was just not good. Um, so it was just something that I got to work on. I just had to work on. So I have a question and, 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 I mean, I've talked to a couple of other people, but you, you brought something up about the difference between, especially with short tracks on iRacing versus real life. I'm a damn good driver in a car, like speed, control, you know, skid, you know, drifting type stuff. I could do that. The difference is I can't feel that on iRacing. Yes. I don't feel it in my butt. You I was going to say, I don't you fe- drive with your butt. Yeah, I, I, I mean, look, I've raced cars my whole life. A lot of it was drag racing. I had a 76 Nova and, you know, with, with a 350 in it when I was younger. 76 is long before you guys were, any of y'all were born. 2076 you know, or, oh, 1970. <laughs> 1976, yeah. Uh, and I was five in 76, but I had a 76 Nova. Yeah, but now that would be a classic car. But, I mean, no, we could, I can maneuver that car. Or I can maneuver my, when I had a, a Nissan 240. I took my 240 around Atlanta Motor Speedway after it got hit by a tornado years ago, okay? So I'm coming around. I've made several laps. I'm coming around turn three, and I finally, it broke loose. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, my insurance is not going to cover me wrecking my Nissan 240SX. Luckily, I spun, and I just I was able to gather it back up and, and coast down after doing one full 360, you know, and coast down and, you know, make sure that I hadn't, you know, messed myself up or anything and, you know, needing a change of underwear or anything. But, <laughs> but I mean, that I still, I did really good saving the car, driving the car. I can't do that with this sim, no matter what I do. No, mm-hmm. no. And that's something that it's so different um, from the sim to real life. That's, that's where I say the iRacing uh, doesn't help. Uh, iRacing, like I said, it helps you get about 80% there. Um, I think the track where it affected me the most in terms of difference was Darlington. Yeah. Um, we were fast. Don't get me wrong. We were fast, but I had to adjust big time for how turn one and two drove in real life versus on the sim. Um, and that was just something I had to learn. I had to learn as I went, um, but you and, know, same thing for everybody. And I guess Phoenix to a degree, because they don't have the, updated version of phoenix on i race yeah there's some yet. sight lines there's some sight yeah. lines at phoenix that are definitely worse i'm glad i had raced there the year prior to this year because we showed up we were much faster this year yeah uh, didn't have the luck but we were much faster um i think <laughs> i had 30 lap old tires yeah we came in because i had to go to the garage i came back out just to you know finish the race um and with like 25, 30 lap old tires, we were only like two tenths off the leader. So, I mean, we, we had speed. It's just, you know, bad luck. But yeah. I, I attest a lot of things like that to iRacing. Now, you know, we're happy to have you on the show here. As a matter of fact, as we go forward, you know, feel free to call us up and say, hey, I want to join the show. You, can, you are welcome on the podcast any week that we're doing this thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, look. You know, I've, I've 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 thought the world of you since I first met you, and uh, thank you, and 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 help and would help you any way I could. So if you need to, you need us for anything, you you definitely let us know, and uh, and we're here for you. Thank you, I appreciate now, that. Now speaking of tests, uh, 
a story that came out of the Architest. Uh, Chris Hacker was not able to run the Architest at Daytona mm -hmm. due to a positive COVID-19 test. Well, he's recovered from COVID-19. However, because he was not able to complete the test, he has not been given clearance to run the ARCA race at Daytona mm -hmm. and therefore is going to be forced to miss the ARCA race at Daytona. Yeah, unfortunate circumstances. Uh, granted, glad he's doing better. Uh, I wish there was a way around it. Uh, I think ARCA is only going to have a 30 minute practice this year uh, before the race, which doesn't help his cause to uh, get clearance, at least uh, with the way ARCA is handling clearances this year. Uh, it's just an unfortunate situation all around. Now, Justin, I believe you have some Supercross news. Yeah, uh, we've got we've got a lot of Supercross. Let me pull those up because um, uh, I think the last time we recorded was Tuesday of last week, which was right yes. when round two was racing. Um, and then round three was Saturday at Houston. Now they're heading out to Indianapolis. Um, so first with round two in the 250 class, uh, Jet Lawrence uh, finally gets his first win. It feel, for everyone, it feels like it's been kind of long time coming even though it's only his like ninth career start but this kid has been uh outstanding out of the gate um and and i know i, I it's kind of weird with me saying that um uh i say it because my uncle uh, is actually coaching him uh johnny omera osho so um but that's been really cool to finally see him get that first win uh i know a lot of my family has been like edge of their seat kind of stuff so um uh, that's as much favoritism as I'll show, but no, the kid's real smart. He's a great kid. He's super enthusiastic. Uh, you know, 17 years old from Australia, um, and, and rides the bike like crazy. So he's definitely got it in him. Uh, and we knew it was going to happen one of these races. So, uh, congratulations to Jet Lawrence grabbing that win in round two. And then the 450 class, we had quite a, uh, uh, quite a battle. Um, Eli Tomac ends up getting the win. Um, but what happened was um, uh, Chase Sexton went down uh, right after the sand pit and uh, they had to put out the medical flag, um, which is basically a, a, the rule book says you can't jump and you can't pass in that section of the track. It's basically one step down from a red flag uh, without a full course caution. Um, uh, so there's uh, very strict rules around that. And um, apparently four riders and one of them being Ken Roxon uh, was caught jumping and they were issued penalties. Uh, the penalty actually knocked Roxon out of the point lead uh, all the way down to fifth in the championship. So uh, he uh, lost ground there. Um, Chase Sexton ended up missing uh, round three and then just last night announced that he's going to be missing um, the next two races out in Indianapolis and is hoping to make round six. Uh, so that's unfortunate. He's uh, he's we he won uh, the 250 class uh, championship last year. Uh, in the East Division, that is. And so he's he's definitely got some speed. Um, he was leading a couple laps as well out in Houston uh, before his crash. So uh, he's definitely got it in him. And I know if uh, if he's able to put a few good races together, him and Dylan Ferrandis are going to uh, put on a good show for that Rookie of the Year in the 450 class. Um, so best of luck to Chase for getting healed up. Um, but keep that in mind with Ken Roxon uh, as we go into uh, now round three, which was Saturday night. Um, Colt Nichols uh, in the 250 class takes over the win. So with uh, him and Christian Craig having the exact same finishes across all three uh, rounds, literally just completely flopped the opposite direction. Uh, those two are now tied for the championship lead. So they're, uh, uh, they both get to wear the red plate uh, going out to Indianapolis. So um, that's pretty exciting. I know Christian Craig, uh, it's been a long time coming for him uh getting his first win in i want to say about five years or so uh, in the 250 class so um uh for him to be able to hold on to that championship lead and taking a red plate out to round four is, is a huge confidence booster for him um but now going to the 450 class with ken roxon um uh, Cooper Webb ended up uh, taking the whole shot, leading the first couple laps, and then Ken Roxon able to get by. Uh, I think expanded that lead to about a three and a half second lead. Um, coming around to take the white flag, he got caught up behind Dean Wilson. Um, <laughs> and there's a lot of conspiracy theories. I don't know with if. That. I 
I don't know if you can look at the photos. I don't know if caught up was the right word. And by the way, you had an awesome photographer at Houston three. Um, I don't know who that might have been, <clears throat> but uh, I yeah. think we have images of, uh, of of Ken getting just flat out blocked in the sand. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of a lot of different conspiracy theories of what happened. But Dean Wilson ended up uh, uh, kind of. Or however you view it, you either view it as Dean Wilson picked the same line as Roxon or Roxon picked the same line as Dean Wilson. Um, and that allowed Cooper Webb to get by on the last lap and uh, and take the win away from Roxon. And that was a that was another three point swing for Roxon. So out in Houston, Roxon missing out on seven points. He leads the championship by one point. Um, a lot of conspiracy theories out there being thrown right now because uh, Dean Wilson um, riding uh, with. Uh, I think Kawasaki is it and Kawasaki and KTM both own gas gas, which is written by Justin Barsha and Barsha winning the opening round um, being close in that championship battle and then getting the win for Cooper Webb to get him caught up. There's a lot of conspiracy theories with that, but uh, Ken Roxon deciding to kind of just go, you know, it is what it is. I'm frustrated uh, and Go check out the Kicking website. Jerry's got uh, some photos for us because he was out there. One hundred and eight of them. One hundred and eight. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no wonder why. No wonder why my website's crashing, Jerry. <laughs> um, but I actually included a few of the photos as well, and you'll see um, exactly where some of those pictures are from, and you'll see on our social media too. Uh, Ken Roxon going up to Dean Wilson right after the race, and and some of the fans cheering and wanting a fight for sure. <laughs> but um, Ken Roxon holding back and and at least having a little bit of respect and knowing it's early in the year so uh we'll see if that plays into effect later on in this year and if this championship is determined by less than seven points and uh ken roxon might have a word so roxon obviously looking for that first win of the year but going into indianapolis with the uh, uh point lead it's it's very slim but it is the point lead and so he'll be wearing the red plate uh so i'm sure he's uh uh, definitely happy with that and then um hopefully uh my wife and i will be out in arlington later this year so that'll be fun to get to say hi to everybody again i know covid's kind of held us back from a lot of stuff uh since we covered a, uh the anaheim races the uh, i think we covered a vegas race and then uh what san diego and oakland or something like that so um and then that's when the pandemic started so uh hopefully we'll be able to see some uh familiar faces and and stuff like that so well, they were glad to have us, and I heard what Roxon said, and he was very unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I would be too. I mean, it's almost like you know, somebody. Other than the fact that you know, in NASCAR, we actually do fight, and except when <laughs> you know people decide not to take off their helmets. Uh, <laughs> Well, look, Ryan, you know this. You know this. Look, if, if you have a blue flag and it's the middle of the race, you know whatever. But when it's the white flag, blue flag just flat out means there's a race going on and you ain't in it. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's <laughs> – I've uh, I've been held up myself by lap traffic, um, and it's cost me races. Uh, it's not good, It's but it's just one of those things that's unfortunately part of racing. Um you know, I don't know much about the Supercross stuff and how that, you know, blue flag stuff works over there. Um, but I do know it's just one of those, like, you just got to be predictable in, in those cases. I know in the photo, if you look closely, you can see that the angst on Roxon's face as, as you know, because he's second jumping over the as the flames are going off. And, and you know, and, and the guy, you know, Cooper gets around him it's like ah, you know yeah it, so it was a uh, that was crazy and and i hadn't even figured out what had happened i really I, i'm shooting the photo and i did not know until and, i saw and i'm Roxanne. texting you get in the pits get ready for the fight <laughs> i was following i was following roxon so i didn't know what was going on yep. until i got over there and i saw roxon wasn't on stage and I'm like, holy crap! Some and he's running over there to the to you know to the to confront the, you know. And I'm like, wow, this is fixing to blow up. We're gonna have a great fight. I'm right here in the front. <laughs> but he didn't hit. He didn't punch him. And he, you know, I mean, I guess the guy could have you know, dri you know ridden away or whatever. He did. He did throw himself on the sword on social media and and yeah. in later articles and say, hey, I'm sorry, but. You know, we always say I'm sorry after after we get caught doing something stupid. So, 
Yep. Dean Wilson issued apology on Instagram and then Roxon uh, responded with uh, apology accepted. But, you know, we know racers. They'll, they'll say apology accepted. But uh, even though Roxon's a really nice guy, we'll see how much that's been accepted. Hey, Ryan, how long is your memory? I remember the first name of the first person that ever wrecked me. Yep. Wow. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. First and last name. You uh, know I remember he's the car amazing. number. Ooh. I remember the night. <laughs> I remember how mad I was. Um, heck, I, I have a whole list of people that just don't like me for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. So, now, yeah. I, so I just I have that in the back of my mind. No, uh, I, I do I do have a question now. No, only because you brought this up, but uh, do you, does that extend to I racing at all? Because I vividly remember the first race. It was an official one that he and I were in together. Uh, Sim Lab Production Car Challenge. That you were in the Herbie Jetta, and you got wrecked before you even crossed the line. I can't remember that one. That one, so sometimes <laughs> in high racing I do. If it's like an official race like that, I don't remember. But if it's like I remember every Monday night I racing crash. I yeah. all those. I I, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I've taken a lot of them into into thought. Yeah, when I get I, to people. Luckily, I, at least none of the crashes I've caused you've been in. I know that for a fact. Have I ever wrecked you? <laughs> no. See, I've 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 never hey, wrecked you. Good. Yeah, you're good. No, I'm good. <laughs> because the two that I caused this year, one was at Taldega, and it, I moved it up across Blicky's nose, and then the other was just myself at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Literally, no one around me. So, <laughs> yeah. Usually, if it, usually it's people running into me because I'm so damn <laughs> slow. You know, I'm trying. I'm like trying to get down to the bottom of the track. I'll I'll get out of your way. If, you know, if I see oh uh, I'll move. I've, I've had experiences with slow cars like that in real life, hitting a slow car. Oh, boy. Those are uh, not there, fun. Speaking of real life, there's one right now. Uh, Lawrence Van Door on Twitter, an IMSA driver. Uh, he very narrowly avoided slamming into a prototype in practice. He's in a GT car. The prototype decided to go to pit road from the outside wall. Nice. Oh, that sounds like every driver out here on California freeways. Yeah. <laughs> I don't envy you. <laughs> having lived there for 17 years. Oh, man. Every yeah. time I go there, uh, I love seeing family. I love being with my family. After about, like, four days, I want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come to Houston. We, you know, we have great drivers here. <laughs> yeah. If you if you well, can I mean, drive in Houston, only, you can drive anywhere. The only complaint I have about Huntersville and Concord, this area, is that people like to drive exactly five miles an hour under the speed limit. Exactly. Yep. You me, like if it's a forty-five. Out. If it's a forty-five, you I can guarantee you're gonna get stuck behind someone that's going forty. It's gonna make you mad. M meanwhile, you won't have that with me. Meanwhile, oh, up here in Mooresville. <laughs> meanwhile, yeah, up here in Mooresville, you just have people that love to uh, go and block intersections. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I try to, I try to do my best to, uh, you know, hurry traffic along. <laughs> so let's see what else do we have on the list. We've got Bubba Wallace wins the 2020 uh, NMPA Spirit Award. Mm -hmm. um, a big deal there with the Pocono Spirit Award uh, given uh, every year uh, with the NMPA National Motorsport Press Association. Um, yep. Moment of you know it's complete openness. I'm the secretary treasurer of the board. Uh, Justin is also on the board as uh, uh, director of marketing, social media, uh, you know, and I'm member. just a member. And he's a and Seth is a member. Uh, but so Bubba gets uh, big honors uh, for receiving the Pocono Spirit Award, uh, not only for what he went through last year with some of the things uh, that we all we all know about, but the way he handled it and mm -hmm. the way he responded um, and was a, and was a role model. Uh, of sorts for, uh, for, for diversity and, uh, Ryan, obviously, you know, about, uh, diversity coming through, through rev racing and, and, and that's part of that whole program there. Uh, so you know, he, uh, he's going to get those honors. We're supposed to have a, an award, uh, you know, like a banquet and stuff. And, uh, but we, because of COVID we, we can't, um, but we will get that trophy to him and, uh, and obviously pay our, 
pay our honors to uh, for everything that he did. Uh, in other news going on this weekend, we have IMSA racing, Rolex 24 hours. Um, I will be there because I'm a glutton for punishment. And, uh, you know, I mean, why not? Let's let's get on a plane on Saturday, fly to Daytona, get off the plane, drive to Daytona or grab to the track. <laughs> You know, watch a race all night long, then get on a plane on Sunday night and fly back to Texas. That seems like the perfect thing to do. Uh, but if you're interested in watching the race, Saturday, uh, race goes live 3.30 uh, on NBC, green flags at 3.40. And uh, they'll have an hour's worth of coverage on NBC on the big, big, big bird, as we call it. Uh, then it's going to switch over uh, 4.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern uh, on NBCSN from eight Eastern on, it'll be on the NBC app. And then uh, on the overnight, I guess, well, for an hour at least, uh, it's gonna be on, M no, yeah, let's see. 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. They switched up the days here, but for four hours, it will be on the NBC NBCSN overnight. So you can watch that. Uh, I'll be uh, helping uh, a couple of other media outlets with their coverage. Uh, during that time, just kind of giving them information so that they can do their updates. Three to six, back on the NBC uh, app. Six to two, NBC SN. And then two to four uh, Eastern time, they close it out. Uh, green flag uh, or checkered flag coming at, at, at 340, uh, twice around the clock action with, uh, I mean, all forms of, of, you know, you've got Mazdas, you've got uh, you know, you've got the the Lamborghinis, you've got the Porsches, you've got the DP classes. This is going to be a, a this is always an awesome race out there. Ryan, have you ever been able to to participate in any of you? Do you want to participate in that? Any, any? Um, no, I haven't done any road racing like you know stuff like that. My first road race experience was actually racing K and N. I'd never driven any road courses prior wow. to that, so um, that was that's been my road course experience i love road courses i'd love to do some sports car stuff um obviously if it, it'd have to make sense for me to do it i'd have to you know have a lot of things line up for me to do so but you know it, it's always something that's really cool to me i remember i mean when i was a kid waking up at, early in the morning on watching speed channel watching some of it so i mean you know i've always loved road racing um i still love it um the 20 the 24 is always a favorite for me i'll keep it on all day long i'll have it i'll fall asleep i'll have like the stream on my like my ipad or my <laughs> phone here and um and just have it on in the background as i sleep i'll wake up and i'll like half crack my eye open like who's leading okay and i'll go to sleep <laughs> um I, I i'll never stay up the entire time um but i'd love to do something like that i'd love to do a 24 a 24 hour of something i think it'd be super fun super neat mm -hmm. um a challenge for sure um, endurance racing is no easy task. You know, you're not just asking a lot out of the driver, but you're asking a lot out of the car. Um, and I think that's probably some of the most, I, I, I strongly feel that endurance racing, like 24 hour races and 12 hour races, th that's some of like the most pure forms of motorsport you can get. Well, uh, we had thought about doing the 24 hours of, of kick the kicking show. Um, but Justin said, <laughs> no, we can't stream for 24 hours straight. <laughs> and he doesn't want to stay up that long. <laughs> Like I said, I would never be on camera for 24 hours. You can tell, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I will say this, though, uh, as far as road course racing experience, I know several drivers have come out uh, essentially down the road from where I live here in Mooresville to uh, GoPro and run uh, the road course that they have there in the karting track uh, to get some experience, whether it's a Bubba Wallace, a Chase Elliott, Raja Karuth, uh, I could look, keep going on with the names. I know they're doing track maintenance right now, but uh, the last time I was there, uh, God, I I know I'm slow in that. Uh, in real life, I was like 12 seconds off the pace. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it is a blast there. Uh, it was interesting in rain, I will say that, uh, the, one of the first times I was there. But... Uh, I, I'm sure you may uh, hop over there at some point to get some more road racing experience. It's not much, but mm -hmm. it is something. Uh, and for the Rolex, at least, uh, the Action Express 31 car, that's the car that Chase Elliott is in, that's who will be sitting on the pole after the car won the qualifying race last weekend. The uh, IMSA, for the first time ever, did a 100-minute qualifying race. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure it was a good concept because uh, pretty sure some of the DPIs were sandbagging, especially when <laughs> the Action Express 31 went from 8 to 1st and then got an 8-second lead on a restart. Hey, they were just saving tires. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't show all your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sandbagging's okay. Sandbagging's okay. I mean, come on. <laughs> just lay we back. Have, and we do that so at Talladega all the time. <laughs> my favorite thing, I'll tell you, oh, I, 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 yeah. I have experienced sandbagging. There was a track that I raced at growing up in Bandoleros. Um, and they had dice. You rolled dice after qualifying. We found out those dice were weighted. So <laughs> I would go from being like two tenths to the green to kind of back it her down a little. Like, man, I got loose. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> I used to, I used to play professional pool. Uh, this is Bandoleros. I, 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 I played, I played, I played you, nine you ball. You can't do that. Yeah. Don't invert. <laughs> yeah. I, I played nine ball yeah. and I played all over the world. Um, but years ago I played on a, on a, on a couple of national tours and, you know, I would throw a few games here and there uh, just to, you know, if it's not in a tournament, if it's just gambling and stuff. But I found that sandbagging doesn't work for long. So I felt my better approach was if somebody asked me if I could play, I just said, yeah, and I'm, I plan on taking your money. So uh, so if you want to play, then get on the table. If not, leave me alone because I don't have time to, to you know, to, to – mess around i'm you know hitting balls or i'm relaxing or whatever but yeah sandbagging doesn't work for long because people figure it out and then they know that you were sandbagging and that doesn't help you at all oh yeah no i only did i only i only had to ex experiment with that once <laughs> so by the way tony stewart's a great pool player but he can't be mm -hmm. so oh yeah. okay <laughs> we're, to, we're having a rematch we're having Is a that... rematch in uh in uh, daytona supposedly this year so is that why we can't get Tony on here? I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I keep talking trash about him, his pool game. But there you go. He did tell me. He did tell me last <laughs> week that he did tell me last week that he wants a rematch. So, uh, so maybe I can. Maybe I'll send him a, a message and get him on the show. There you go. Yeah, tell tell him tell him you'll let him on the show, uh, or you let him win if he comes on the show. I ain't letting him win. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that's uh that's our hour. I mean, we had a couple other topics, but we'll save them for next week because uh, it's just kind of a fun one. But Ryan, hey, we thanks, had Ryan Vargas. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for taking the time. I know it's later. Yeah, thank there. you. This guy's going to be a Cup champion someday, and we had him on our show. That's right. I, I hope I'm. I hope I race Cup. <laughs> He's like, <"Forget> <laughs> I, mean, I just want to drive one of those cars. <laughs> I was like, say, I told myself, heck, I mean, I, I, I told myself when I was like 12 or 13, I had an interview, and they said, "What's a successful career for you?" And I was like, "Man, that's a deep question." But um, I told them, I said, "I want to race at Daytona. Um, if I could race anything at Daytona, that is a successful year." Well, not only am I going to do that, but I'm going to do run a whole entire season of Xfinity. So, yeah. Um, We've definitely succeeded, uh, exceeded those goals. Um, well, not yet. Still got to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, so it's just pretty cool to see that all come out. So well, hopefully one day. We're proud to have you on the show. We're proud to Thank follow you. your career. And like I said, anytime you want to jump in, uh, you know, you've got the code now. So uh, yeah. you, you, all you got to do is get on. And, <laughs> yeah, I'll just pop in one time. Just yeah. guys, uh, That'd be great. That'd be like, I, I, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be in the middle of some news and all of a sudden Ryan pops in. Hey, yeah, guys. We just, mentioned, we just mentioned him and like. Oh, you know, he, he wrecked this person in iRacing and then he, he comes in and he's like, yeah. what did you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll do that one time. Someone says my name. Like, I, uh, I, I always love hopping in people's, like, streams and stuff just to bully them. <laughs> That'd be great, this man. It's all pretty round table, man. You're always welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, guys, you guys take care. Uh, we're going to call it a night. I've got to go and uh, get clothes ready for this crazy weekend that I'm going to have down in, uh, in Florida. And here's the thing. I go to Florida. I fly back. Then I have to, I have to go back to Florida the next week for speed weeks with Daytona 500. Oh, and then they threw in a road course after that. So I'm in Florida three weekends in a row. 
um, before I get to actually come back and, and sleep on my in my bed here uh, in Texas. So that's going to do it here for us on Kick, the Kicking Show. Thanks for tuning in every week. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button uh, and follow us on Twitter as well, uh, YouTube, Facebook. We're everywhere, Twitch. And uh, that's going to do it. See you next week.